Most of my friends believe that technology has begun to eat away at our humanity. They see technology as taking us farther and farther away from being human. In fact, I would go as far as to say that many of them believe that technology is like a cancer eating away at our souls, a vice wronging our existence, but yet they're unable to live without it. Now, I don't agree, but I can't deny how much of a distraction our modern day technology has become. Our screens are demanding a lot of our time. And we have spent a lot of our time these past few decades building a virtual world, sometimes over our real one. Now, our smartphones and computers are powerful, life-changing technologies, but our newness with this technology can be likened to that of an adolescence, self-absorbed and struggling to find an identity. But we are about to grow up. We are at the dawn of a huge shift, a new wave of computing, one unfettered from screens and able to coexist in the world around us. Wearable technology will act as a cure to the technologies before it, reconnecting us to ourselves, reconnecting us to each other, reconnecting us to a higher power, and helping us to become human again. But in order to do this, we need to ask ourselves what it means to be human. Is being human what we are at birth, naked and vulnerable, unshaped by our experiences, language, our caregivers, and the world around us? Or is being human what we become, molded by our identities which are shaped by the stories that we're told, or by the experiences that we create in part by the tools that we have access to, tools like technology? I would argue the latter. Augmentation is innately human. Since our caveman days, we have been clothing our bodies and creating the tools necessary to become the people that we are today. Now, our tools have become much more sophisticated since the stone-carved dagger. Our computers and smartphones now shape every facet of our lives. And the Internet of Things, and with it wearable technology, will continue to push our species forward. Now, many people ask why I get out of bed and I'm wholly consumed by wearable tech, and it's because of this. I believe that wearable technology is a critical part to our human evolution. But more importantly, I see that in this wave of computing, more than any of the others before it, it will challenge our traditional notions of humanity, to see that there is no separation between humanity and technology, that they're one in the same, and that we require technology in order for humanity to exist. But this is sometimes difficult to see in a time when we may feel disconnected and separated from our technology. Our smartphone use has become synonymous with rudeness, and we are being accused of having the shortest attention span of all of human history. And this speaks to a separation gap between us and our tech. Up until now, our relationship with technology has mostly been a separate one. We began long ago with huge computers in rooms that we visited, and those became miniaturized to desktop versions, but even now they reside at work or in a home office where we frequent and leave. And even though our technology has become mobile, with smartphones, tablets, and laptops, they still have homes in our pockets, purses, and bags. No matter how much you want to cling on to that smartphone for your dear life, at some point you have to go to the washroom, you have to eat, or you have to sleep, and it's no longer a part of you. Wearable technology, will dramatically close this separation gap, shifting where our tech is from being something that sits in a room or that we hold in our hand to something that we wear on our bodies as an extension of ourselves. And as wearable technology will have access to our bodies, it will get to know us in a much more intimate way. It will also usher forth a new and more natural way to interact with technology, thus changing our relationship with tech. And in changing our relationship with technology, it will change the way we relate to ourselves, to each other, and the world around us. Now, we know more about the machines around us than we do the most important machine of all, ourselves. Oftentimes, I, I ask people about their smartphone's operating system, and they can talk at length about what it's all about. But when I ask them what their resting heart rate should be, they don't know. 
And believe me, this was myself as well when I got my very first fitness tracker with the heart rate monitor. I had to Google whether or not the heart rate I was seeing was normal. But wearables will change how we see ourselves. Wearables will start to allow us to see ourselves as biological beings. And if it does nothing but this, it will be the most important thing that has ever happened to you. Medical devices that were once only in the hands of doctors are now becoming democratized to the masses, which means that you will get access to your own physiological information. And the Fitbits, the Jawbones, the Nike Fuel Bands of the world, they've started this transition and shift with the STEP. And the STEP is a great way to start because the STEP is an easy, fun metric that we all understand, and it will help us become more reacquainted with the fact that we are a machine. But wearable technology has already moved well beyond the step. To be able to measure our heart rate, our breathing, even our muscle effort. And today I'm wearing a smart shirt from Hexoskin, and behind me on the screen you're seeing my heart rate and breathing. Wearables are creating what I like to call a data mirror. We are able to see our true picture of health through the biometric information that it's gathering. And by looking into this reflection, we will know ourselves better. And to know better means that we can be better, which means we can become healthier, better machines. But it's not just our physical selves that will be captured and reflected in this data mirror, but our emotional selves as well. The GSR, or galvanic skin response, is a powerful sensor that is starting to be utilized in the wearable space. A GSR works by looking at the sweat on your skin and then it determines your arousal state, which can then measure your stress or indicate your emotion. Now, a good example of GSR in action is a smart ring called Mood Metric. Mood Metric uses GSR to quantify your stress level on a scale from zero to 100, where 100, you're stressed out, and where zero, you're chill, relaxed, and zen. Today, we use our gut when it comes to emotion and stress but we are slowly beginning to get devices that can provide us with data that can either verify or even challenge our emotional state. And in the case of our health, we, this idea of understanding our stress can really help out, but knowing our emotions can also help us grow our relationships. Wearables are also tackling our mental selves. Interaxon is a leading thought-controlled computing company in Toronto, and they have developed the brain-sensing headband Muse. Muse is a personal meditative assistant that uses EEG, or electroencephalogram, to monitor your brainwaves and then visualize those brainwaves in an app, showing you when your brain is calm or when it's active. And it uses audio cues to walk you through a meditative exercise. So you hear a serene beach scene when your mind is calm or you'll hear the beginnings of a storm when your mind is active. Muse is quantifying your mental self and it's adding it to that data mirror. But it's also a powerful tool to help you be more present in your physical body. And being more present with yourself is exactly what the wearable camera category of wearable tech wants to help you achieve. We are innate storytellers, but today, to capture the moment, we need to disrupt it. We either need to stop it completely, say cheese, or we have to remove ourselves from that moment in order to capture it in action. Imagine going on vacation and being able to live every moment to its fullest, knowing that every moment on that vacation is being captured so that when you return, you can share it with your friends. This is the promise of wearable cameras. Wearable cameras will document our lives on our behalf, removing the need for us to take pictures and videos, which means that we will be more present in the moment and therefore more present with ourselves. But as much as wearables are bringing us closer to ourselves, they are also going to help us reconnect with one another. This is a still from a short film named Sight, in which it depicts a future where we all wear smart contact lenses that provides us with information about the world around us. In this scene, our main character is using these devices to pull up information about the blind date he's on with the woman across from him. Now, this future scares a lot of people. But the fact of the matter is that we have all the tools necessary to pull up information about ourselves 
with our smartphone today. It's just that in doing this with a smartphone across from the person, it would be completely rude. The immediacy of this information, combined with the fact that it will be part of our site, is the big shift in wearable technology. Now, we probably won't begin this journey with a pair of smart contact lenses, but smart glasses like Recon Jet, Meta, Google Glass are all moving information to our natural line of sight, thus augmenting our vision. And in fact, Meta shows in their concept video that it could be possible to use facial recognition software to be able to bring up information on who you're seeing. In addition, Google Glass had an application that used public information from social networks combined with your calendar to bring up info on the person that you're about to meet with. But what does it mean to live in a world where we know so much about each other? Well, it means that no one is a stranger. It means that we can quickly move past that awkward ice-breaking stage to head into a deep, meaningful conversation with everybody we meet. Wearables could allow for us to relate with everybody on a deep level by providing us with the tools to strike a conversation and find that necessary common ground. But I also see how wearables could usher in a new form of communication beyond the verbal and text-based languages that we're used to today, one that will allow us to relate in a much more efficient and even more meaningful manner. Wearables could create a body language of sorts, leveraging haptic feedback or vibrations. And in this way, it will allow us to feel the messages that we're sending to one another, rather than having to look at a screen or even hear what's being said. And I see the beginnings of this communication revolution in Apple Watch's digital touch. Digital touch on Apple Watch allows Apple Watch wearers to send vibrations to one another's wrists. You can send your biometric information, like your heartbeat, to one another, or you can tap on the screen to do something like a body morse code. So imagine sitting here in the audience and feeling your significant other's heartbeat, and that means that they're thinking about you, or going to a party and you feel three taps on your wrist, and that means that your friend wants to get the heck out of here. <laughs> this could all become possible. We may teach our body a new language, just like we taught ourselves new language with mobile through SMS and emoji. And this language could help us literally feel more connected than ever before. And I also see how wearables could provide us with the tools to show the world how we feel without saying a word. This is the GER mood sweater from a startup in San Francisco called Sensory. And this sweater uses that GSR sensor I talked about to determine your mood. And in doing so, it'll change the LEDs in the cowl of the sweater accordingly. So blue, you're calm. Purple, you're excited. Red, you're nervous, and so on. Imagine if everybody in this room was wearing a sweater like this. How would that change how you would treat the person beside you? Wearables could allow us to relate deeply on an emotional level without saying a word to one another, thus tapping in our empathy for ourselves and each other. And it's empathy which is at the core of the last example I want to give on how wearable technology can help us relate to one another. Virtual reality, or VR, is being touted as the ultimate empathy machine. Virtual reality is an immersive 360-degree experience which allows you to feel like you're in the content, not watch it. Devices like Google Cardboard, Samsung Gear VR, or Oculus Rift use head tracking so that you're able to see left, right, up and down in the 360-degree scene, making you feel like you're there. This tool will allow us to walk a mile in other people's shoes. In VR, you can become another gender, another age, another race, or be in another place entirely, which was the case for Clouds Over Sidra, which is a short VR documentary created by Verse, commissioned by the UN to help people feel like they are living in a Syrian refugee camp. When you experience something like this in VR, you'll come back to this world with a changed perspective. And hopefully, that will change how you treat the people around you. 
Now, I've talked a lot about how wearables will impact our physical selves and our social selves, but I think it would be amiss if I didn't touch on how wearables could impact our spiritual selves as well. And for this, I have a lot more questions than I do answers and theories, but perhaps that's most appropriate. My first example takes me back to VR. Right now, virtual reality isn't necessarily the most realistic experience, and oftentimes it can leave you motion sick. But this technology is getting better and better, and as these experiences become more real, I think we will start to question our reality altogether. When we experience something very real in virtual reality and come back to this world, how could we not ask ourselves, is this real? Is this the simulation? I think we will all begin to have these existential conversations with ourselves as we continue our journey to alternate realities. But further to that, I think just the fact that we can create alternate realities and cities and trees and so on using virtual reality and augmented reality, which is bringing digital constructs in the physical world, could change how we see a higher power, could change our spiritual growth. Will we get a God complex? I don't know. But beyond AR and VR, I also see how wearables can allow for us to see ourselves as part of a bigger picture. Pixmog is a wearable LED bracelet that you would wear at a concert. And when you look around, you feel like you are part of that overall big experience. Wearables like this could help us feel more connected and in turn could further our spiritual development. I'm eager to see how this all plays out. Now, before I leave the stage, I want to leave you with this. The next time you see a Fitbit or an Apple Watch, know that you hold in your hand a piece of your own evolution. And once you put that wearable on, there's no turning back. Thank you.